telling us how she's gone from Blue Peter to Blue Murder. Please welcome Janet Ellis. <laughs> yeah, this look, is... Look, it's uncanny. It's I know, like wow. That's Whoa. amazing. She looks like Janet Street Porter. Exactly. <laughs> I know, if you said Janet, that's what, <laughs> that's what I meant. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> that is no, it doesn't do that. In fact, it I don't know how you're going to display it. Like this. On a sp <laughs> oh. <laughs> Everyone's an art critic. <laughs> Such a good sport with oh, all of that. Thank um, you for having me. Tell me about the lack of sticky back plastic. Yeah, yeah I know. What? Get that. I know. I felt weird. Actually, funnily enough, Sophie's eldest, Sunny, when he was starting at secondary school, brought home a whole load of books and said, I need to cover these in sticky back plastic. <laughs> wow. Like, Seriously. And Bring them here. Sophie nor I had any in the house. <laughs> 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 now, obviously, um, you've, it was, th was it 30 years ago? Yeah, well, Jack's Blue 28 Peter. and I left to have him, so, yeah. Wow. That's incredible, and yet we still hark back. <laughs> <laughs> um, we were obviously um, told you were coming on today to discuss your books. We were, all, we were all sent copies of it. I read it in a weekend. Did you? I absolutely loved it. Oh, it's such a, a different read. You know, obviously we get a lot of people on talking about their, their, their novels or what have you. Trying, trying to explain it to everyone this morning is, is quite difficult, but it's a historical novel. It's written sort of in the first person yeah. in historical speak, if you like. Yeah, I think it was sort of exercise in improvisation, really, because mm. having started as an actress, yeah. as I was writing, I found I was in character writing it. Okay. So you heard her voice. Yeah, but absolutely. But I didn't feel that in the first in the first few pages I was right with her mm, I mean yeah. just really just strikingly so oh, like so nice. like never I mean I I haven't finished it yet but I mean I'm she's it's really good <laughs> she's yeah. keep wanting to tell me what happened yeah. but, but I mean I I, I think it's and fantastic it's your, it's your first novel yeah. isn't it yeah. And what made you choose 18th century London? Because that sort of requires a bit of research, it doesn't does. it? It yeah. does, yeah. And I, I have to say there's a variety of things. I mean, firstly, I knew I wanted this voice. I knew she wasn't contemporary. I wasn't quite mm. sure when it was. And I think I've always been fascinated by that time because it mm. gets a bit, I don't know, squashed under the Victorians a bit, doesn't it? Mm. I mean, if you live in London, you see Georgian, but it kind of winks at you past those dominating yeah, yeah. buildings that came in after. So, you know, Georgian one, one right. Of the, one of the <laughs> things that's so interesting is she's not very nice. She's not very you nice. You kind of expect the heroine or the main character of a story to, you know, trundle along quite nicely and have some adventures in this matter. <laughs> she's, she's a right one. She is a right one, yeah. Um, but I think it was so enjoyable writing someone who, obviously, the things that Anne gets up to, I would not, do not try this at home. Yes. But, <laughs> On the other hand, when people have said to me, well, I've read her and she's not very nice, but I kind of liked her, I thought, well, I've got loads of friends like that. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, your friends and always did she, did she change from the time you started writing it? Did she become a different character or did you stick with who no, she was No, I, I think I always had this sort of sideways look on life that she has. And after all, girls in those days did not have an education. Yeah. They weren't encouraged to think, goodness knows who you even spoke to. Mm -hmm. You know, you lived in a yeah. household where you pr practically saw no one from day to day. Yeah. So anything you thought, was stored up in your head. So the way she makes sense of the world to her is perfectly logical. So no, the voice it got, got louder. Yes. <laughs> yeah. But, but it, it, it is a bit, because people always say, did you write from personal experience? Um, and you kind of, sometimes you, you, you say you've occupied the character, but <clears> you do sort of use personal experiences, I think, when you're writing a book. Inevitably. And, and I mean, obviously, your, your character had miscarriages. Her mother, and, her mother and, has miscarriages. Yeah, yeah. And, and you yourself have had miscarriages, which I know you've talked about yeah, in yeah. the past. So Absolutely. I guess you must be channelling some of that. You know, the weird thing with that is, yeah, I've had a lot of miscarriages. I've got three children, I haven't got a fourth. I had ten miscarriages not having a fourth child. But the weird thing is that when I wrote about Anne's mother having multiple miscarriages, yeah. I was writing it from Anne's perspective, this 19-year-old girl who knows nothing about the world at yeah. that stage. And it's the honest truth. I didn't mm. think of it. And that, I know it's weird. I'm sure my therapist is on speed dial because of <laughs> it. But, but I just, because, because Anne's attitude to it is it gets in the way of her happiness. Yeah. You know, her mother not being there because of the, all those pregnancies means she's not accessible to her. So I guess I'd made it so passive. I mean, maybe at some point I could, in a different book, write about that experience because mm. obviously it's vivid mm. and I know it well. But... For some reason, that distance allowed yeah. me to just see it from this rather callous point of view. So maybe that's just another part of the process. I don't know. I'm so looking forward to the rest of it. <laughs> June. When you wrote this, when you submitted it, you didn't use your, your own name, did you? I didn't. You know, that is such a good idea now that I'm going to claim that as mine. Yeah, I decided. But actually, it was my agent who said, 
when the book was finished, he said, look, I think we should submit this to publishers under a pseudonym. And I went, don't go any further, because I've actually written it. So I'd quite like people yeah. to put it as me. <laughs> so there's no like conceptions. Book. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, he said, look, there's just a chance, you know, not that I'm mega super famous or anything, but yeah. that Blue Peter, Janet Ellis, if there's anyone who kind of goes, oh yes, before they read it, yeah. may or just oh, have no, an idea. Yes, it, no. may just have an mm. idea of something or other. Yeah. Also, to be fair, it gave him two cracks of the whip, didn't it? Well, yeah, <laughs> it didn't work under whoever. Yeah, exactly. Like, Actually, look okay. what I did. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and good luck with the book. We genuinely oh, love it. Thank Janet you so Ellis. Much. Thank you. For more Loose Women action, click here. And I'd subscribe if I were you. It's totally free and it means you'll be kept up to date with new videos and exclusive YouTube content. And it's like when I look at girls now and they've got it all hanging out, I look at them and think, oh my God. And then I'm like, hang on a minute, Kate, that's exactly what you yeah, was like. Yeah, but yeah. I suppose it's part of growing up. I wasn't up, even but... joking when I said you started it. <laughs>